On today's show, Elon Musk calls delays in Model 3 production a six to nine month time shift for Model 3 reservation holders and tells them that they will get their cars eventually and adds that Tesla is rapidly making its way out of production hell. Rumors fly around suggesting Tesla will start producing the Model Y electric car in 2019 and Daimler confirms that in just three years time, it will stop making internal combustion engine smart cars altogether. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host, and I spend all week scouring the internet for the best clean energy and transportation stories, just so you don't have to. Thanks for joining me. We're off to the US for our first story where Elon Musk has promised Model 3 customers that they will definitely get their cars, but they will have to wait an extra six to nine months to do so. Musk made the comments during a series of exclusive interviews aired this week on CBS in the US, in which he added that he believes Tesla is rapidly making its way out of production hell. Asked by CBS co-host Gail King if Model 3 customers were cancelling their reservations, Musk noted that some had, but usually because they needed a car there and then, and Tesla couldn't provide one. He also reiterated the fact that he was sleeping at the Fremont factory, something which means he's always on hand to help solve problems as they occur. Here's hoping that it works for Model 3 production, just like it did with Model X production, and if the Model 3 I recently rode in is anything to go by, build quality of recently made cars is certainly better than early Model 3s were. Last week, I told you the news that BMW was most likely not going to continue producing the i3 and i8 into second generation models. The reason? BMW was supposedly more interested in bringing all electric models to its mainstream brand. Well, this week we've got a slightly different rumor from Motor.es, which claims that BMW is using some of the $8.6 billion it recently pledged to electric vehicle development to make a new super mini called the i1. Smaller than the next generation 1 series BMW, this model would supposedly be based on the all-electric Mini Cooper Electric that the brand will launch in 2019. While BMW isn't commenting just yet, it's worth noting that it did claim the i1 badge late last year, along with the iX1 through to iX9 names. And as with any rumor, when we've got more info on it, I'll let you know. With production of its Model 3 ramping up and plenty of Model S cars coming to the end of their original lease program, Tesla has quietly announced a significant change to its certified pre-owned vehicle program. Previously, Tesla would take part exchanged or end of lease cars, carry out an extensive inspection and service, then fix any cosmetic or mechanical issues before selling them on to customers with a four year 50,000 mile warranty or two year 100,000 maximum odometer limited warranty, depending on vehicle age. But now it's announced that it will no longer be refurbishing pre-owned cars. Instead, it will give them a 70-point mechanical inspection and clean the vehicle up, telling owners that if they'd like any additional work not covered under warranty, it will arrange service after delivery to carry those things out at added cost to the owner. It won't impact everyone, but for those who had wondered about changing their Model 3 reservation for a pre-owned Model S or X, it could change their decision-making process. Over the past few years, we've seen plenty of startup companies wanting to match and beat Tesla in the electric vehicle marketplace. Many of them have been Chinese, but this week, Chinese firm Xiaoping, which is already backed by the Alibaba Group and Foxconn Technology Group, yes, the company that makes iPhones and other tech, announced it plans to begin pre-sales of its first model, the G3 electric crossover, by the end of this month. At the same time, the company says it's on track to raise a total of more than 1.6 billion US dollars in investment this year in order to reach production volumes of tens of thousands of cars in just 12 months. Leveraging Alibaba's software prowess, Xiaoping's vehicles have some pretty impressive mapping and cloud-based technology as standard, showing that the company really has Tesla in its sights. With any luck, I'll be at the Beijing Auto Show next week, so maybe I'll be able to bring you a little more information very soon. While Chinese firms are going after luxury electric vehicles, a new high-tech vehicle launched in India this week. But rather than copy a Western automaker, the Strom Motors R3 is a three-wheeled EV powered by a 13 kilowatt electric motor that its maker hopes to bring to market for just 300,000 rupees, or four and a half thousand US dollars. 
I don't think this is a toy. Offered with the choice of two different battery packs that will offer either 80 or 120 kilometers of range, that's 50 or 75 miles, the R3 won't be particularly fast, but with seating options for either two or three passengers and an onboard infotainment system that includes a wireless 3G and Wi-Fi connectivity, smartphone app and more, it's a vehicle that's meant to bring affordable electric travel to the market at Tata Nano prices. If it succeeds in doing so, that's quite the achievement. Mercedes-Benz, just like any other mainstream automaker, is in something of a massive investment cycle right now, pledging more than 1.8 billion US dollars in developing a range of new electric vehicles under its EQ sub-brand. So far, we know about the EQA and EQC, but this week Mercedes-Benz confirmed that it's working on an all-electric S-Class-sized vehicle called the EQS. We don't have any pictures of it yet, of course. This is the S-Class plug-in hybrid. But with the S-Class known for being one of the cars that cross shops against the Tesla Model S, an all-electric S-Class variant could be very interesting in the market indeed, especially if it makes use of next-generation 350 kilowatt CCS quick charging technology favoured by all the major German automakers, including Benz. Watch this space. Tesla might be running at full throttle to get itself out of production hell with Model 3, but it's also quietly working to bring its all-electric Model Y to market. At least, that's according to recent rumours from Reuters, which suggest Tesla is aiming to bring the Model Y SUV to market in 2019. Tesla hasn't responded to requests to confirm or deny this rumour, but given that 2019 is the year that Tesla aims to bring its all-electric semi to market, and its second-generation Roadster soon after that, the rumour, if true, would suggest Tesla is just going to keep ramping up its production and plans with no time for anyone at the company to catch a breath in between. It's official. After hints were dropped that Matthias Muller would be stepping down as his role as CEO of Volkswagen, the company announced on Thursday that Herbert Diaz, Volkswagen brand's chief, would be replacing him at the top of the company. The move is supposedly part of a massive shift at the German automaker away from the Dieselgate debacle of three years ago and onto a future dominated by all-electric autonomous vehicles. And, as if to prove a point, Volkswagen also announced this week that it's chosen its Braunschweig factory in Germany as the place where it will develop and produce battery systems for its new range of NEB platform-derived electric cars. That will not only include Volkswagen brand vehicles, but models made by sister brands like Audi and Porsche too. With Volkswagen still keen to set itself up as a leader in electric mobility, it is good to see some movement, but as I'm sure you've heard me say plenty of times before, production vehicles aren't any good until they're actually in production. So Volkswagen, hurry up. Back in the middle of last year, Daimler announced that it was going to cease selling petrol and diesel-powered smart cars in North America, turning the smart brand into an electric-only badge. Well, now it's announced the same will happen globally, with the last internal combustion engine smart car due to be made sometime before 2020. And given that Daimler recently unveiled EQ-badged smart cars at the Geneva Motor Show, it's hardly a surprise, but it is nice to see the tiny smart car finally become what it should have been from the start an all-electric vehicle. I should note too that with 22 kilowatts of onboard AC charging planned for new smart EQ models, it might be a good choice if you're looking for a runabout that's at home in downtown Auckland, just as much as it is cruising down the west coast. We've already covered one three-wheeler in this show in the form of the practical Indian market Strom R3, but now we're going to do something very different in the form of the iconic sporty T-Rex three-wheeled trike. If you're into sporty, quirky vehicles, I'm sure you know about the T-Rex already. But this week, Campania Motors announced it would be unveiling an all-electric prototype version of the T-Rex at the Montreal Electric Vehicle Show. What's more, it's worked with zero motorcycles to ensure the trike has the best battery pack and powertrain it possibly can. I can't wait to have a look at it, but as I won't be going to Montreal, I guess I'll have to. And finally, slot car EVs. I'm sure at some point someone, maybe you, has pondered the question as to why electric cars don't draw power from the road in the same way that Scalectric's cars do. Indeed, a couple of years ago, Renault even did a faux publicity stunt involving two Renault Zoe EVs supposedly racing around central London on a specially constructed 
slot car racetrack. Sadly, that wasn't real, but it turns out that fact is sometimes stranger than fiction. Behold the world's first electrified road, which opened just outside of Stockholm, Sweden this week. Installed by E-Road Arlanda, the idea is pretty simple. Two arms underneath an electric car connect to the track and recharge at key points during their journey. The tracks, insulated at the surface, are said to be super durable and safe. They've even been tested in snow and can provide power to both electric cars and trucks. And at a cost far cheaper than either traditional tram tracks or inductive charging systems, what's not to like? Oh, and if you're wondering, the little arms underneath your car will retract if you change lanes or go around a corner. Just in case you were wondering, because I was. Sadly, that's your lot for the week. But don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got feedback, well, be sure to send it our way. As always, I will be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And as always, don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. That's it. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Thanks for joining me. Kakite. See you next time. <laughs>